Okay, so we are talking about parallelograms. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So we'll write that definition down. There are four main characteristics we're going to focus on. The first one is that opposite sides are congruent. The second one is that opposite angles are congruent. Okay. Third will be that consecutive angles, meaning on the same side. They are supplementary, meaning they're going to add to 180, so I'll put that in parentheses as a reminder. And then the fourth is that the diagonals from one corner vertice to another corner vertice across the figure, the diagonals bisect each other. Bisect is a familiar word to us. We learned it before, but bisect means they're going to be into equal parts, or cut in half, things like that. All right, so let's look at number one. I want you to keep in mind um, that these are a lot like a puzzle, so sometimes you have to find one part in order to get to the other part. So number one, we know that opposite sides are equal, so if I'm looking for AD, AD is going to be the same measure as BC, so AD is 8, all right? And then DC is going to be the same measure as AB, so it's going to be 15. Angle A would be consecutive. See how these share a side? AD connects angle A and angle D. Those are supplementary, so I'll have to do 180 minus 68 in order to get angle A, and that makes angle A 112 degrees. Angle B is opposite of angle D, so it's going to be the same measure, 68 degrees. And angle C is opposite of angle A, so it's going to be 112 degrees. We're going to move on past number two because it's a lot like number one and go to something a little different. If you notice three, you can see those diagonals. RT and US would be considered a diagonal because they're going through the figure from one vertice to another. All right. um, we still have our opposite sides being equal. Um, so if you notice UT and RS are opposite, so they're going to be the same measure. RU and ST are opposite, so they're going to be the same measure. And then it's going to talk about VS. And if you look at VS, VS is here, and it's going to be the same measure as UV. And I know that because diagonals bisect each other, so those sections are going to have to be the same. So that's going to be 7. And then VT is this part of RT, and they gave you RT. Okay, So this whole section, this whole thing is 30 which means this part has been bisected, RT has been bisected to be this part, is going to be half. So to get this part, I will do 30 divided by 2. So we'll have 15. So bisect means to cut into equal parts or cut in half. All right, if you look at number 4, all right, we're going to be moving on. We're still talking about diagonals, and now we're talking about angles. Okay, so keep in mind this is a parallelogram, which means opposite sides are parallel. All right, so Back in our unit when we talked about parallel lines, we talked about alternate interior angle, consecutive interior angle. And so those alternate interior angles are going to be very helpful because we'll be able to find certain measures for that reason. So um, let's first look at finding DEC. And when I do these angles, I try to trace them so that I can be very, very careful in order to find them. And so I'm looking for DEC, which is this angle here. Okay, and I'll erase that in a second so it doesn't muddy up what we're doing. What I know is that FED, this entire angle, is 134. That's this information down here. And FEC, that left part of that angle, is 71. So I can do 134 minus 71, and I will get 63. 
for this angle. Together, 71 and 63 should equal that 134 degree angle. Okay, so then we'll go to CDE. And CDE is this angle here. Okay, so we have that. And we will be able to find that by using some of our alternate interior angle information that we will have. And I know that this angle here is 21 degrees because of alternate interior angles. These two are going to be equal. So then we're going to have to figure out what that top angle is so we can add it together. Okay, that's going to be useful because um, we'll have to put the two angles, this angle here, with the 21 to be able to do that. What I do notice, though, is since opposite angles are equal, this angle here is 134. Okay, when I put a whole thing together, and the angle on the left over here is 21, and all the angles in a triangle are going to add to 180 degrees. So I can subtract 180, and I can take away 21, and 134, and that's going to leave me with 25. So this angle here is 25 degrees. So when I put them together, 25 plus 21 will give me CDE as 46 degrees. Then I'm going to look at ECD, and ECD is this angle here, okay? and that's great and easy because these two are alternate interior angles for the parallel lines, and so it's 71 degrees, so it's going to be equal. And then DFE is this angle here which since we found this one is 25 degrees, these two are alternate interior angles, so it's 25 degrees. Um, so probably by now you can kind of see what I mean by um, has like a puzzle-like mentality to it. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit to get the picture in for this next one. So they gave us a bunch of information in words or in the statement and not in the drawing, so we may have to add that in ourselves. Okay. So um, we'll just kind of watch that, and I'm going to go ahead. I want to label in what I know, and I know that XY is 15, and WX is 22, and ZX is this entire segment here. I'm not going to write it in there, but this whole segment, okay, is 32. WT is 10, okay, and then we have WZY is 62. So this whole angle here is 62. I don't want to write over the line, so I'm going to do that. And then WXT, WXT here is 27 degrees. All right, and then ZWT is 77 degrees. So I'll squeeze that in there next to that 10. Okay, so let's see what they've asked us for. They've asked us for ZW. ZW is opposite of xy so it's 15 and zy is opposite of wx so it is 22 all right and then tx is just this section here we know the whole thing again is 32 so to get to tx we'll do 32 divided by 2 so we'll have 16 and then wy is this entire length we know this part of it is 10, which means this part is also 10. So if I put those together, I'll have 20. So there's for the segments. The segments are a little easier to identify because you don't have to worry about um, overlapping them and tracing them as much. Okay, let me erase a little bit about my segment so it's not as wild looking. All right, TZY. TZY is this angle here and these alternate interior angles so they're 27 degrees so alternate interior means in between the parallel lines but on opposite sides of the transversal so those diagonals are acting as transversals x y and z x y z is this big angle here right there so that is x y and z and in order to find that we're going to have to do a little bit of work um, to do that because these two angles right here these two angles together those are consecutive interior angles, which means they're supplementary. So I'm going to take 180 and minus out angle Z, which is 62 degrees, and so that I will be left with 118 degrees. All right. So 
Then let's look a little bit more. And I need to find, I'm going to put this 27 back in just in case I need it later. And then we are looking for XWT, which is this angle here. Okay. Well, what I know is that this entire angle here is 118. Therefore, this entire angle here is 118. So I'll do 118 minus 77, and that will give me um, 1. Let me make sure that I'm looking at the right angle. X, W, T. That's it. Oh, yeah minus 77 and then when I do 118 minus 77 okay I'm right and we'll get 41 degrees seemed a little smaller than I thought in my head I don't have my calculator with me all right and then the last one we're going to do is xyt and xyt is here which is great because these two are alternate interior angles and so it's just going to be 77 degrees okay. all right and so uh, angles, uh, number six is a lot like what we just did, except it's just focusing on those angles. Okay, so you use lots of alternate interior angles, opposite angles are equal, consecutive angles add to 180, that kind of thing. So let's now look at number seven. Um, we've got a little bit more going on in the algebraic world here, um, but we'll use our geometric rules that we just talked about to help find x. And so we know that opposite sides of parallelogram are equal. So I'm going to actually just set these two equations equal to each other. And then I'll solve it. So I'll subtract 5x from both sides. At the same time, I'm going to add 25 to both sides. And I'll have 4x is equal to 32, divide both sides by 4, and I'll get x is equal to 8. Um, number 8 is just like that, so we're going to move on down to number 9. Okay, It tells me that this whole section here is 74, and it tells me VW, just this part, is 4x plus 1. So don't set them equal. If you look, VW is smaller than TV. It's contained within TV with some left over. Okay. What I do know is that diagonals bisect each other. So it's going to take two lengths of VW in order to be the entire length of TV. Or think about it like this. These two sections are equal. So this is also 4x plus 1. So you're going to need two 4x plus 1s. Okay. Um, 4x plus 1 is only half of the 74. So I'm going to take two of my 4x plus 1s because that's how many it takes to equal 74. And I'll distribute that. I subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 8, and I'll have x is equal to 9. I'm going to do 10 because it, it's a little different as well. Okay, we have ns is 2x plus 7, and sq is 5x minus 23. So neither of them are the whole length. They're both the halves. They're both the parts that make up that same diagonal. These are equal to each other. So since they are equal to each other, we'll actually just put an equal sign. So in this case, we didn't have to multiply to equal them. Okay, I'm, Number 9, I had to make them equal, so I had to double that smaller one. But these are both the halves, so they'll be equal to each other. Okay, So let's go ahead and solve that. Subtract 2x from both sides and add 23 to both sides at the same time so that I get 30 is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3 and I get x equal 10. I'm not done though, because it asked me to find nq, and so I've got to plug that in. Notice nq is this entire length, and they didn't give me an equation for that, but what I can do is I can plug it in to each one if I want, and add them, or you can plug it into either of them and double it, because it'll take two, and they are the same measure, that's kind of up to you. I'm gonna just plug it into both of them, so it's good practice. And so if I simplify just this part, I get 27. And if I simplify just this part, I get 27. And the reason I did it separate like that is because those should be the same measure because those sections are equal to each other. And I'll get in Q is 54. Okay, let's go down to number 11. Opposite angles are equal. Okay, also pay attention to the direction. We're not just finding X. Once we find X, we'll have to use it. But I need to find X in order to find angle B. So I'm going to equal these two opposite angles to each other. 
minus 4x from both sides and add 15 to both sides. And so that I get 2x is equal to 16, so x is 8. It's asking me to find angle B, but they didn't give me an equation for angle B. What I do know is that B is supplementary to either both A and C, so I'll just pick one to plug it into. I'm going to choose these two since those are consecutive angles, and I will just plug in to find the actual measure of C first. So I'll plug in 8. Uh, 4 times 8 is 32 plus 11 is 33. I think I missed added. I wrote that there. There, that's 26. So this is 13. That's much better. Left off a 1, so be careful not to do stuff like that. That's silly on my part. All right, so we'll get 63 for this angle. And then those are supplementary, so I need to do 180 minus 63 in order to find angle B. So the measure of angle B is equal to 117 degrees. Go on to number 2. If you look, these are already consecutive. Okay, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So on number 11, they're opposite. We equal them. On number 12, they're consecutive, so I'm going to add them up to 180. So even though I don't know what the values are, I still have to add them to equal 180, and then we can find x in order to find the measure of angle r. So adding those two angles to equal 180, let's first simplify. And then add 7 to both sides. Divide both sides by 11. And then I need to find angle r which is great because angle R and angle P are opposite angles, and so they're going to be equal. So the measure of angle R is actually going to be 17 plugged into angle P's equation because they're equivalent. Okay, that's what it means to be congruent. And 3 times 17 plus 5 is going to be 56 degrees. Almost finished. Two more. Let's look then at angle 13. Okay, and we know that KLH is important, the information is KLH, this entire angle here, we know it's 134 degrees. Okay, that's important. And then we also know that these two are equal, and that's 25 degrees. The reason that's important is if I put these two together, the 4x plus 9 and the 25, I'll get the entire angle K as it is, not split into sections. So I will add 4x plus 9 plus 25, that's just that angle K, and it's going to be consecutive with angle L. So I'm going to add in my angle L, my KLH, and it's going to be equal to 180. So pay attention to what we did there. We put these two angles together to equal that entire angle on the top right, and it's going to be supplementary to that angle on the bottom right because they're consecutive. If I go ahead and simplify, I'm going to end up with 4x equal to, when I subtract those uh, numbers over to the other side, 4x equals 12, so I did 180 minus 134 minus 25 minus 9 to get that 12. Divide both sides by 4, and I'll get x is equal to 3, and the instruction said just to solve for x. 14 is looks similar, except for they asked me to find the measure of angle ADB, which means I'll have to end up plugging it in at some point. We know that angle ABC, this is ABC here, is 115. Okay. I also know that these two angles are equal, so this is also 6x minus 11. So if you notice that 4x plus 6 and that 6x minus 11, when I put them together, they're equivalent to that 115 degree angle. So I'm going to add them not to equal 180 because they're not consecutive, but I'm actually going to add them together to equal that entire angle that they told us to measure of 115. So I will simplify so that I have, when I combine my x's, I'll have 10x. I'm going to add 11 over to the right and subtract 6 over to the right so that I have 10x equals 120. Divide both sides by 10, and I'll get x is equal to 12. Okay, so then I have to find ADB, and ADB is just this part here. Okay, I like to use the letters to trace to make sure I'm talking about the right angle. And so I'll do 6 times 12 minus 11, and I'll get 61 